This conference will now be recorded. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's uh, call the meeting to order of the Deployment Committee for September 22nd, uh, 2021. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to provide public comments? Okay, hearing none, uh, seeing no members there. Okay, let's move to agenda item number three, which is approval of the meeting minutes for our last special meeting on September 8th, 2021. Uh, we included those meeting minutes uh, in the materials. Uh, any questions, comments on those meeting minutes? Uh, if not, does somebody want to move the passage of those meeting minutes from September 8th? This is moved. Oh, sorry. Yes, second. Candice. <laughs> Great. Lonnie moved. Uh, Banu second. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Great. Nays. Abstentions. Commissioner, do you want to abstain on these? Yeah, I'll just abstain since I wasn't here. Thank you. Great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. Meetings. Pa meeting minutes pass. Okay. So we are going to transition uh, to Mackey uh, and his team who are going to present uh, a CPACE transaction that we're excited about. I'll turn it over to you, Mac. Great. Thanks, Brian. Um, and yeah, this is a. I think this is an exciting one. Um, so this is a solar PV project at 1200 Park Street in Hartford. Uh, any of you that might be uh, that are familiar with Hartford might be familiar with this property. Um, it's over in uh, the Parkville area, just uh, sort of across the the overpass from the, the Parkville Market. Um, this is a, let's see, a 489 kilowatt. Uh, in, in the aggregate system, it's actually three three separate systems, um, but it's being installed by Verigi, who is a, a solar develop Hartford-based solar developer uh, that we've been doing a lot of recent work with. They're uh, they're quickly growing, um, so I, it's a great project from the standpoint that it's you know it's a very uh, well-known Hartford property. It's one of our uh, key installers. Uh, best partners, and then third, the property is owned by Carlos uh, Motra or Matra. I'm not exactly sure the pronunciation, but uh, I think is, if you're familiar with Hartford in the Parkville area, you're familiar with uh, with him. Uh, he owns several property, uh, 33 properties, I think it is in, in Hartford, and he's been the driver behind the, the Parkville area Renaissance. He owns Parkville Market, um, so you know a very prominent developer and Hartford, so it's great uh, that uh, uh, he's getting his first taste of, of CPACE here. Uh, Virgi instigated this relationship um, and you know, introduced us and CPACE to him, uh, so we're excited to, to hopefully do, do, uh, do more with him, both on the retrofit and potentially the new construction side as you know, he continues the expansion of, of his empire. Let's see, scroll our next slide, please. Yep, so this is a just under $900,000 all-in uh, CPACE loan. Um, all the metrics are you know, within our, our standard uh, underwriting criteria. Um, this is uh, a, uh, you know, it's, it's a strip mall, um, a bunch of uh, commercial businesses in there, family dollar, uh, other smaller businesses. It actually uh, was fairly resilient uh, during COVID. Um, not only did not have any evictions, they didn't have any late payments. Um, so it's a it's a you know fairly strong strong property. Next slide. There we go. On the tear sheet. Oh, maybe yeah, I can go on to the uh, to the tear sheet. Um, yeah, and I think you know this project will only enhance the uh, the strength of the property. Uh, the savings to investment ratio is is quite high, 1.677. Um, so, you know, this will add up, you know, another revenue stream to the to the property. Um, and again, this is a, a CPACE project, so it will be backed by the the senior CPACE tax assessment on the on the property and repaid through the the property taxes uh, uh, to on a say Hartford's biannual, so uh, you know, twice a year basis back to the the Green Bank. 
Um, David or Bert, anything you want to add from an underwriting perspective on this project, or otherwise we'll just turn it over to questions. No, I just say the, the great thing is it's really strong and consistent revenue. Um, going from about 1.25 million um, to 1.37 million over the last three years. And that's including with the, the, 20, the COVID year of 2020. Um, so really strong and steady commercial real estate property. So um, feel quite confident about this one. Great, thanks, thanks David. So with that, we can go to the next slide with the resolution uh, and open it up for questions. Great. Questions, comments for Mackie or David? This is Lonnie. Just a quick marketing question. Do we get a plaque on this sucker? I mean, I think we need to be leaving our food around. We've been working on a lot of these things. It'd be nice to have plaques on all the stuff we're doing. So that when people say, yeah, it's a good point. We try at minimum we do a press release on on every project that we do, um, and then you know where there's something unique about each one, uh, you know we'll, we'll try to do a little more. Um, yeah, that I mean, so I mean, we'll see. Given the you know who uh, Mr. Mountra is in the community, uh, to see if maybe he's willing to to do something to sort of you know, and it's good press for him to have folks know he's going solar and. Uh, for us to draw attention to the fact that such a you know prominent developer in the state is is using this tool um, is yeah something we'll certainly seek to do. That's a really good point. Uh, all state funds we have that project sign usually you know DCD projects D projects we we have it as a requirement for any. Uh, funding, it's in our, uh, you know, contract documents. So is this something that we want to do? Yeah, that's it. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm very familiar with those state signs. And then yeah. you're right, like any construction project, you see the banks that are financing it. Um, you know, they got their signs on the outside. Um, yeah, let me take that and see, uh, let us think through how, uh, how that might work and then come back to y'all. It's an interesting idea. Part, part of our, especially in this case, part of our uh, headquartering into Hartford and working with all businesses and organizations in the city and the state on making Hartford there, helping Hartford become more the greenest city in America. Kind of be nice. Good suggestions. Any yeah, other questions? I'll talk with our marketing team about that. Just. Yeah. Okay, is there somebody who wants to move resolution number two? This is Bino, so moved. Great, thank Lonnie, you. Lonnie, I'll second. Oh, sorry, did I step on somebody? Thank you, Lonnie. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Great. Nays, abstentions. All right, great. Thank you, thank you. Good work, uh, team. Thank great, you. Great project. Okay, we are going to uh, do a few uh, updates. Uh, Sergio Carrillo is going to be here uh, to provide us an update on incentive programs. I'll turn it over to you, Sergio. Thank you, Brian. And good afternoon, everyone. This is Sergio Carrillo, Director of Incentive Programs. Um, let me uh, provide a quick update on the RCIP program. Um, NARCIP and RCIP E. So as of last Friday, we can say that both RCIP and RCIP E are fully subscribed. The RCIP program that had a capacity of 350 megawatts, um, we have as of last Friday, 342.8 megawatts of completed projects. And uh, we have 7.2 megawatts of approved projects that are under construction. It's a matter of probably a couple of months until all these projects complete. And on the RCPE, that is, it has 32 megawatts of capacity, and uh, the approval of RCPE was to foster the sustained orderly development of the solar industry in the state. Um, we have 5.3 megawatts of completed projects, 
25.3 megawatts of approved projects that are under construction. That is 30.6, meaning there is 1.4 megawatts of available capacity. However, we have uh, roughly twice that much in, in the submitted queue pending approval, pending review and approval. So for the first time, this happens where we have more applications for incentives, that capacity available. So for all intents and purposes, we are fully subscribed. Uh, we have been working, the Parsi team have been working and will continue to work with the EDCs on the transition to the new renew, renewable energy tariff that will be in place on January 1st. Uh, we have met with the EDCs on multiple occasions. We are having meetings probably twice a month. Um, and we have provided guidelines on fields that will need to be collected and reported on in the future, such as customer information, system information, system performance, and others, uh, wiring diagrams to ensure that solar systems and battery storage can coexist, um, given that both programs will start to uh, will start on the same day, on January 1st of 2022, on consumer protection issues and many other things. Next slide, please. Um, so yesterday, uh, Pura issued a proposed in interim decision in docket 210802, which is the renewable ener energy tariff, uh, that sets the tariff rates for projects built in 2022 and will be effective for 20 years. Um, as you know, there will be two options. Homeowners will have two options, the buy all, sell all tariff and the netting tariff. Um, under the buy all, sell all tariff, um, the rate will provide a rate of return of 10%. And uh, under the netting tariff, uh, this the the rate will provide a rate of return between nine and eleven percent, and the difference basically is that the buy all sell all rate is a flat rate fixed for twenty years, um, whereas the netting tariff is a floating rate that will be uh, the sum of the retail rate plus a rec price. Um, Again, the homeowner will have to choose which one of the two they will want to use for the next 20 years. And uh, it is satisfying to see that the many of the decisions made by Pura are a direct result of the Green Bank's advocacy efforts, including the rate of return, which, is, which was a product of the work we did with Guidehouse um, to ensure that in the future, homeowners received similar compensation to the one that net metering and RCIP were providing. Uh, the tariff calculator, which um, we basically took the tariff calculator that Deep had developed probably two, three years ago, and we modified the calculator to make it um, to, to, to work with Pura's um, expectations. And uh, it happens that it will, be, it will be used moving forward to set the tariffs, both tariffs, the buy all and the netting tariff, uh, the inclusion of adders for low and moderate income and distressed communities customers, uh, the inclusion of direct payment, which is also uh, a direct effort or a request from, from the Green Bank, the, um, the treatment of multifamily affordable housing to be eligible to receive uh, residential tariffs uh, in the past of up until now, multifamily affordable housing was considered CNI customers, but moving forward will be eligible to receive residential tariffs. So a great, a great uh, accomplishment for the Green Bank. Uh, at the end, these are the rates that Pura approved for the 20 for projects built in 2022 uh, 29 cents and a quarter 
per megawatt hour in every source and um, EY. Uh, there is an additional adder for low and moderate income customers of 2.5 cents and uh, additional adder for distressed municipalities of one and a quarter cents per megawatt hour. Um, as I said, for the netting option, the resulting tariff rate is going to be the retail rate plus that rec value. And it is set as three, three cents, no, three dollars. What is that? Three cents per kilowatt hour. Sorry. Um, is there any questions related to RCIP or the renewable energy tariff? All right, next slide. Sergio, please. I actually have a question. Um, yes. Do we expect that we're going to be on time January 1? Um, yes, what we have heard from the utilities is that they're taking this as a mandate. It's not an option and they will be ready. Uh, my understanding is that there might have, they might have delays on the billing side. Their billing system might not be up and running by January 1st, uh, and it's going to take them uh, a few a few additional months to be to be ready. But the expectation is that yes, they will be ready. They are conducting webinars with contractors to um, to um, discuss all the program design, all the parameters, uh, the enrollment platforms, and all that. Thank you so much for that. Yes, so um, on the revenue grade meter uh, replacement, last time we we were here back in uh, May, we were about to issue a, an RFP for the replacement of 5,000 revenue grade meters um, in Connecticut as a result of the sunset of the 3G cellular networks. As you know, 99% of our meters communicate through three, uh, cellular networks. But with the sunset of the 3G networks, uh, there is the risk that some of our system will lose connectivity and we will not be able to capture um, production data that we can use later to create regs and transact on those regs or trade those regs. Um, so we ran an RFP from May to mid-August. We received nine bits and down selected three vendors, Sun System Technology, SST, Ancon, and CTEC. Two of them are Connecticut um, companies. Over the last two or three weeks, we've negotiated PSAs with these three vendors, and we are ready to go. Um, the incentives team, work with the marketing staff to to plan an outreach to plan co uh, customer outreach if you can imagine we're going to reach out to 5000 homeowners it's going to require a lot of work and coordination to make this happen um we are having kickoff meetings with the contractors and estimating that they will need two weeks to procure the first batch of meters. And for that reason, the field work is anticipated to start on October 11th, or the week of October 11th. The total estimated replacement cost is just under $2.5 million. Sir, any, any questions related to this? Next slide, Brian, please. All right, and now let's talk about battery storage incentive program. Um, as you as you uh, all know, Pure had issued a final decision back in July 28th, um, and it had several objectives, um, including the deployment of battery storage in vulnerable communities. For residential and CNI customers, um, and to provide resilience to the electric grid, um, Pura is doing this with a cost uh, cost effectiveness approach, and uh, to achieve this, uh, they're requesting that the battery 
the storage program delivers a rim of 1.4. RIM is a, is a benefit cost test that um, RIM stands for rate payer impact measure. Basically what it means is that the benefits of the program to all rate payers divided by the cost of administering the programs should be 1.4, should be greater than 1.4 meaning that there will be no negative impact on rate payers there is no subsidy subsidization from non-participating rate payers etc um the program contemplates additional adders for underserved communities uh grid edge customers critical facilities and uh, cni customers with fossil fuel on-site generators uh, next slide, Brian, please. Um, and the proposed final decision, or in the final decision, uh, Pura included 26 orders, of which 12 are due on October 1st. Um, we are directly involved in several of these orders, including um, the RFP to retain an EMV consultant. Uh, we filed the draft RFP with Pura back in August, I think it was August 15, um, received approval from Pura with some modifications. We made the modifications um, and issued the RFP last Friday. We anticipate receiving responses to the RFP uh, by October 15. Um, so we'll see, but yes, it's 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 well on the way. Um, we are developing um, in collaboration with the EDCs the program design documents, basically how how the program is going to work, application of the application process, the enrollment process, and all that. Um, we are working on the incentive designs for both residential and non-residential customers for the upfront and performance-based incentive pieces. Um, we are working with Guidehouse on the BCA analysis, which um, basically would allow us to determine the right incentive levels um, that will deliver that rim of 1.4 or greater. Uh, we developed a marketing plan, Eric, took the lead on this and uh, completed a marketing plan that is looking really solid. Uh, we socialized it with the utilities and uh, it should be ready hopefully by this Friday that, so that we're in a position to file it with Pura. Um, also the system eligibility requirements to participate in the program and, and, and a couple of others. So a lot of work being done right now um, we expect to be in a position to file with Pura all these orders uh, by October 1st. Um, is there any questions related to battery storage? All right, Brian, I'll turn it over right. to you. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for that update. So a lot of great progress as the market transitions from net metering to a tariff. Uh, January 1st, those renewable energy tariffs will be put into place. Uh, and then lots of exciting work on the uh, standalone or paired with solar PV storage systems per uh, the recently passed Public Act 21-53 uh, and uh, the Pura docket uh, that Sergio just ran through. So teams are working really, really hard. Uh, it's great working with the utilities, watching them kind of hammer things out together and work through uh, issues together, uh, but uh, everything's moving in a positive direction. Okay, so we're going to uh, have Bert uh, provide uh, some updates uh, from the investment side. So we'll turn it over to you, Bert. Okay, thanks. Can you hear me, BG? Okay, great. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, this is just a brief update. Uh, there are a number of transactions uh, that uh, have passed through the board or 
or through deployment. And we just wanted to update you, just given the uh, the significance of these projects to uh, to our overall uh, goals this year. Uh, we have the uh, first up. Uh, we have the FCE Groton project. Uh, this is a 7.4 megawatt fuel cell for the U.S. Naval sub base in New London to provide resiliency for the sub base uh, with a deep supported microgrid. That that part part of the project, the microgrid, is separate from uh, the work that we're financing. So uh, we've lined up $12 million in senior commitments uh, for this, and uh, that's being finalized in the credit committee. We don't see any problems there, and neither do the banks. We're staying very close to that situation, and they're in uh, regular contact with, uh, with FCE. We have uh, weekly meetings uh, to, uh, to monitor progress. And uh, our $8 million uh, financing rounds out the total uh, capital being provided uh, between us and, and the banks. Uh, and uh, also FCE closed on their tax equity already. So that portion of the capital stack, which I believe was about $15 million, is, uh, is already documented and committed, which is, uh, which is very good. Um, <clears throat> on uh, historic Cargill Falls, that's the major restructuring uh, that came before the board. It's moving along in documentation. Um, with the project owner, the Department of Housing, and the Green Bank, the parties that are involved uh, in that, uh, an October close is anticipated. Uh, and I would uh, hasten to say early in October because uh, we've, we've got documents right before us now. So we're going to try to move that as quickly as we can. So let's say in about two weeks. Um, on the hydro completion side, uh, as you might recall, we were uh, waiting for permits to be issued by Connecticut DOT to allow us to finish the piping work associated with uh, the hydro part of the project. Uh, that, that looks like it is moving along well, uh, particularly this week, a lot of traffic on, on that subject with uh, uh, looking like we're going to have that permit to move ahead in the next uh, very few days. So that looks good for us to complete the hydro work in the October and November timeframe. Uh, which would be good because then we'll be able to go into full operation uh, with Hydra. Uh, on uh, the Green Liberty Bonds, uh, if if Mike, you do you want to uh, do an update on T5 and T6 and the possibility of uh, combining those? I'll, I'll let you do that. And then sure, sure. happy to. Okay. okay. Go right ahead. Uh, we're not hearing you for some reason. Or does everybody else hear? Him? Brian, we may we may have lost you, Mike. Okay, I tell you what, I'll give the update. <laughs> uh, it's it's a it's a brief update. Um, so briefly, Tranche Five is a much larger uh, uh, portfolio of Shrex than Tranche Six. I think on the order of like 60 megawatts versus about 30 megawatts for tranche six. Uh, tranche five has been uh, approved uh, by uh, by Pura. Uh, tranche six would not move forward for approval until um, uh, later this year, the very beginning of next year. Uh, so, um, but in, in terms of uh, amount of, of bonds, uh, tranche five would probably be in the order of roughly $20 million. Uh, so that means tranche six being roughly half the uh, size of tranche five would, would give us bonding of about $10 million. You know, that $10 million is, is really kind of small to bring the market, it makes the pricing uh, expense inefficient. So in order to uh, be more efficient, bringing the next Shrek bond to, uh, to the market, um, we're, we're uh, thinking strongly, and we're pretty much 100% there, of combining Tranche 5 with Tranche 6 and raising our next Green Liberty Bond uh, early in 2023. So, uh, so that's, that's the current plan for, for right now. Um, in terms of uh, uh, capital for operations, where the Green Bank is, is uh, in good 
position there. So um, this uh, it, there's no really no particular urgency to move uh, forwards with forward with tranche five. Um, uh, so we we're in good shape on that. Is there any question on that while I'm on that particular one? Okay. Um, and uh, as far as uh, there will be activity of reaching, uh, doing issuances with the retail market, however, and uh, one of those would be with Green Liberty Notes that we're developing. Uh, David Beach, would you would you like to uh, cover that uh, briefly for for the Employment Committee, or do you want me to? Uh... Sure, I'm happy to talk um, just briefly. Yeah, we're working with um, Raise Green. Uh, they came to us through our open RFP for Capital Solutions. Um, were these green living notes are going to be backed by um, the green bank's revenues from the SBA program um, that we um, the recapitalization there that happened with amalgamated a few years ago um, and we're really trying to use these notes um, and using specifically raise green actually a Connecticut company um, to, to make these uh, crowdfunding issuance so we can um, give out the nominations um, below a thousand dollars maybe even as low as a hundred dollars um, to really try and reach some of those retail investors that don't have a thousand dollars to spend on the green liberty bonds so great that is really well. yep thank you for that and so the idea is we're going to be coming to market every quarter with those so starting in november and, and every uh every fiscal quarter uh we would be in the market with Green Liberty Notes, which is a great way of staying in front of uh, retail investors. Um, on, on the last item, Posigen, uh, the uh, closing is expected this Friday with a refinancing of, of their uh, lease, uh, their, their facility, which is secured by lease contracts. Uh, it's with Congressional Bank. Um, uh, as a result, restructuring our exposure uh, in the part of the facility that support lease contracts would be reduced by about $12.7 million. Uh, at the same time, uh, the size of our facility that is supported by the performance-based incentive revenues, which we pay out of Posigen, so full goal, that cash is just coming right to us to repay this facility. PBI facility that will go up by about $4.2 million uh, and, uh, and will also recover $1.6 million from IPC and a participation that they have in that facility. So if you take um, uh, the 12.7 decrease uh, offset by the 5.8 million increase on the PBI facility, it's a net exposure reduction of $0.9 million. So uh, this is all very good. It establishes uh, Posigen as really reaching private capital, which was our objective when we started down the road with them about five years ago. It's been a very good path to see uh, the Green Bank helping uh, them expand these facilities from what at the time was less than $10 million of capital to now where they've got a facility that has an accordion all the way up to uh, 250 million dollars ultimately if uh, uh, if they keep expanding their business. So uh, all good news there. Now I just wanted to update the uh, deployment committee on all those activities. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them at this time. Otherwise, uh, back to you, Brian. Bert, I, I wanted to ask you if you could um, tell the story of of the Posigen, um employee. Uh, in Houston, uh, you know, I, I really think beyond, you know, what Posigen is doing to support our activity in Connecticut, that that is a, just kind of a proof point of how companies working in the clean energy space can help improve other people's lives. I, I just thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was really heartwarming, uh, and I think we'll 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 send you a, a link to that to that article. It was actually maybe even a, a television spot down there. Uh, but uh, a customer service representative got a call. This is this is as a result of uh, I guess it was Henri uh, that storm uh, or Ida, uh, one of the two, 
and uh, considerable, I guess it was Henri, and a lot of destruction down there, uh, flooding, et cetera. And, um, uh, and, and so the, the, the customer of Posigen called in a customer service, customer service rep fielded the call. And uh, the person was very distraught uh, about uh, their refrigerator having gone out, lost power. And as you know, solar doesn't operate unless you have a battery with it when, when the grid goes down because uh, you can't keep supplying uh, electricity on, an, on a net, uh, net metering basis because power can go out to grid and could electrocute some uh, workers on the line. So uh, in any case, she was explaining that she was, uh, you know, house was flooded and everything, not flooded, but it was, was, uh, was out of power and everything else. The, uh, the, the Posian uh, customer service rep was uh, so taken by the story and, and offered to come by and did come by uh, with uh, a few people from Posigen, uh, helped clean up, clean up her, uh, her house. And uh, I think they actually bought her a new television because that had been uh, totally fritzed out by the storm and everything else. And, uh, and even got her uh, provisions for a refrigerator because they had to throw a number of things out uh, for the, uh, from the freezer that had, had spoiled. So it was, it was really a heartwarming uh, story. We'll, we'll, we'll share it with you, but it really speaks to uh, the personal investment that, that the Posigen team has with their customers. And, uh, and they've also been doing some things like uh, putting in battery, uh, battery power for some, some of the homes down there on an immediate basis. And um, that's aside from this particular story, so uh, when, when that's paired up and they do some changes to the inverter so that the inverter closes off the power to the home itself, that has now uh, managed to energize these homes uh, that have been cut off uh, for power for, for several weeks, several weeks now, as we know, uh, hearing the, uh, the reports of how, um, how the power utility had to shut down uh, in a broad way down in Louisiana. So uh that's uh that's what i got had for you excellent thanks Bert. And any questions comments on the investment update steady progress wanted to update you all all right let's see um so just kind of moving right along um any other business anyone want to bring up Okay, we're early. That's great. Uh, is there a motion uh, uh, to adjourn? Lonnie, so moved. Excellent. Thank you, Lonnie. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, great. Everyone, thank you very much. Uh, have a great uh, rest of the week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.